Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeremy. I'm Natalie. And today we just wanted to take a little more time to unpack what really happened in that hour-long Attack on Titan episode. It can be kind of hard on our first watch through, so yeah. we've seen it how many times? Two, like three, three times, times since, then. since the first uh, reaction that you guys saw. And there's definitely a lot of scenes that we didn't pick up on or didn't yeah. fully understand. So we just want to take a little more time to kind of dig deeper into those uh, different scenes. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen our reaction already, it is up, and we'll link it down below so you guys can go check that out too and the full reaction is actually up on patreon too if you don't want to watch the edited down version but yeah let's just get right into it and analyze and discuss this so the episode starts out with the see you later aaron scene which yeah. i didn't really pick up on what was going on but he did actually when the episode ended and we stopped recording that was like the first thing you mm -hmm. brought up was like uh, that Mikasa kind of looks different there yeah, a little bit, right? I kind of looked hair. there. Yeah, and it looked maybe like grayish. Yeah. Or I thought that when the hands reached out, like those were kind of like maybe yeah. old lady hands. And then you had said too that that was actually the first, the opening scene in the manga. Yeah, and that's something that Wit didn't even include in the very first opening so if you go read that's the manga. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, the very first scene it actually says see you later, Aaron. And then he wakes up crying and Mikasa's like, why are you crying? But it's crazy that he's- Why would Wit not why would it add start? that? It's, it, it's like Aaron's view. It's like Aaron looking out and you can see Mikasa. It's just like from the eyes down and it says, see you later, Aaron. And then when he wakes up from that dream, what's also not included in the anime is that he says, Mikasa, when, or when did your hair get so long? Seriously? Yeah, because Obviously, when he's looking out and she says, see you later, Aaron, her hair's like here. But then when he wakes up from the dream, Kid Mikasa, her hair's like past the scarf. And he's like, when did your hair get so long? Oh, my God. Wow. And it's Ayama crazy. Is yeah, like that's what the I'm most, saying. Has the most beautiful writing. The fact that it was like planned out, like this whole story has been planned the out very since beginning. he started it. Is the like, very beginning. I just can't even comprehend how a brain could think of all of this and yeah. like get it down. But... Yeah, that scene was really, really beautiful, and I know a lot of people kind of skipped over it who maybe didn't read the manga because mm. they had no idea. They just thought it was like a clip at the beginning, but it's really cool that that was like planned out yeah, since definitely. the beginning. And then the next thing that you see after that is the Romsey scene, mm -hmm. which is absolutely terrifying. That's brutal and to watch. Brutal yeah. And disgusting, but it's also, I think it's such an important scene that you really have to pay attention to because it's showing that it's like the whole thing of attack on titan is like a generational curse basically that's never oh, yeah. broken and it's showing like romsey who's this innocent little kid like aaron once was and the fact that aaron like just doesn't he's so far gone that he doesn't care and is still gonna trample this kid and like how he says to him like yeah i wanted to save my friends inside the walls but it's more than that i saw the outside world and i was so disappointed mm -hmm. and like it's it's showing you like he wants this like he he yeah, does it's... want this he wants to cause the rumbling he wants to take out the whole world he literally says it like he was so disappointed and that's when he was like oh yeah i'm doing this yeah like, and it's crazy to see him like kind of battling with that because obviously as he's saying i was so disappointed he's crying. bawling his eyes out to this kid saying i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah and when he saved him he he was asking himself he's like Reiner, wow, I really am like you. Yeah. Like, I am a half-assed piece of shit because... Which is so full circle. It's crazy because yeah. I'm going to kill this kid later, but here I am trying to save him. And, like, I just loved how they were able to even tie in the Reiner story with that. It's just, like... Yeah, because that's, like... He's crazy. He's doing to Romsey what Reiner did to him and, like, ripping away his, yep. like, childhood and his innocence and just cause like changing the course of everything yeah it's terrifying yeah but when he's looking at him and crying and saying i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah it's it's almost like he's going back and forth between like apologizing to ramsey but also standing firm and like like i'm doing everybody. it i'm yeah. sorry but i'm gonna do it but it's like that little piece of humanity that he has left when he's still crying yeah. and it is heartbreaking because like this whole it's when it's thing, in front of you, you yeah know? Because, like, when he's above the clouds, it's okay. It's right? fine. He's it's not freedom. seeing what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And that's, like, the whole thing, too. It's, like, he thinks that this is freedom, but he's basically just, like, a slave to, like, what's set in stone, what he thinks is, like, the future. Like, he's kind of, like, a slave still in a way to that because 100%. he's just doing what he saw in the future. And it's, like, 
I think you can change that, right? Yeah. And he just doesn't. <laughs> I like to say that he is a slave to his perception of freedom. So like what yeah. he thinks freedom is and what he yeah. thinks freedom is supposed to be, that's what he's a slave to. And it's like, 100%. no, like that is not it, man. Like you can change that, like change your idea of that and like. Anyways, yeah. that's a whole nother argument, but yeah. it's crazy that absolutely he's a slave. Yeah. Okay. So next is just the brutality of the rumbling. Yeah. Right? That was 10 minutes of chaos, Coda. Kind of quit stealing stuff. That's mommy's chapstick. Of just people crying, beating each other up for cars, yeah. trying to fit into trains. People just ending their lives so they don't have to get trampled. That was brutal. That was really, really brutal. And for all that to be happening while Aaron's just in his childlike state above the clouds or the steam. Yeah. It's in the music. Ooh, oh, gave me the, the <laughs> villain <laughs> music. Yeah. It was that like, whole time. I was like sweating. It was very, yeah. very intense and very terrifying. And the fact too that like you just see kids and just like families getting trampled and it's like these people didn't like do anything to you. Some of them. Some of these people didn't do anything to you and you're just like taking them out like that. It was horrifying to watch but it's also i think really important to show like how far aaron is going and has mm -hmm. gone because a lot of people are still like team aaron which i totally get like some people like some people, some just, people just like, love aaron so much like TikTok, it's fine like, they're just gonna be like yeah my boy did nothing wrong yeah and like long, i love aaron too like he's like when you think of him in the first and set like the couple first couple seasons it's like heartbreaking what he's turned into but I mean, he's genocide really, is not cool <laughs> yeah and obviously not but he is doing everything just so his crew can, they can live a live, happy life right? which i i like that side of it i like that it's he's doing it for his friends but i feel like there is other ways like you could have just trampled marley and then just stopped after that and yeah. like the rest of the world would have been scared it's just it's like uh almost going back to what reiner said like there is no one else i would want to not have the coordinate beside you like you are the worst yeah. person to have the founding titan ever yeah and i couldn't agree with that because aaron from the very beginning what does he do he like just gives in to his emotions and he gives in he to does. like yeah. and that's why i think in that scene where he's above the clouds he reverts to this like childlike state because he does what he's always done he just goes based off what he feels right and it's the only way he can cope with doing it on this it's scale it's reverting back to that childlike yeah. state that's interesting because i was gonna bring that up when later he's in paths and he's a kid it's kid aaron yeah. and i was wondering when with i was the watching it why eyes. yeah yeah that's really crazy that and that's really sad too. it is sad and it's scary too it's yeah because people out there can do the same thing yeah you know? obviously not on rumbling level yeah but like it's people do that all the time in big scenarios that end up in murder and then also in like little scenarios like maybe just like when you're living with somebody or when you're working with somebody like yeah. reverting to this like childlike to tendencies cope. to cope with things you know yeah it is weird like when i was um re-watching the fourth season too like the whole fourth season before mm. it's like you almost like miss aaron because it feels like you haven't got to see aaron in so long because it's not doesn't feel like him when he's like this mur psycho murderer that's <laughs> right? committing yeah, genocide. It's like, it's like I miss seeing Aaron in the show. It doesn't feel like he's in it anymore, which is really sad that that's what yeah. he's become. So one thing that we completely missed was that that was Aaron's grandparents in the jail. Yeah. You know, I, some, I had kind of a thought of that, but that was just crazy to see that it for sure was uh, his grandparents. grandparents. And then to, to go to that effect that they threw their ass in jail because Zeke came out a traitor yeah right when they found out that he was working with parody that's just crazy that they threw them in jail i know like, i didn't even connect that until you just said that like what wow crazy didn't they say something too like this now we can pay for everything we've done or something like that when they were dying they yeah. said something like that where it's like back to what we were guilty. talking about how it's like right when faced with death of course they always kind of make yeah, amends right at the last moment that's when they realize all the things they did wrong and it's like if only you would realize that sooner Just maybe things sooner. would be a little different 
Yeah, that was crazy. And then also, too, in that whole, like, rumbling sequence right, be right before it goes into the freedom scene, there's, like, this clip of an arm that's, like, floating through oh. the sky that I noticed. There's, like, the arm's floating, and then it, sh it shows Aaron in his freedom scene, and it's, like... It just reminds me of when he said, like, if, he said, like, I'll take their freedom if they try and take mine. Or yeah, something like, like that. an arm like, for an, an arm, arm for an arm, an basically. An eye for an eye kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was such a small detail, but I just thought it was really cool that Mappa took the time That's to, really like, cool. do that, you yeah. know? But yeah, that whole freedom panel I thought was really, really good. I Did thought it was like amazing. It? I thought when I watched it, it's supposed to be steam underneath, right? Yeah. From the Titans. Yeah. But the... It almost looked like clouds. they just made it clouds, but I'm pretty yeah. sure it's supposed to be steam hmm. underneath. Maybe that's maybe we gotta watch it again. Yeah, we have to watch. We're it going again. just back and forth. <laughs> We're gonna on watch that. it for like but the fifth time. <laughs> either way, it was just perfect how well done and just haunting that whole scene was. Yeah. Right. Um, another scene that I just kind of want to talk about a little more is the conversation between Armin and Annie. Yeah. I really liked how Armin is very self-aware and had to paint it very clear to Annie like hey I am not a good person yeah do not call me a good person I, I have killed a, just as many people literally as you just have. as many people as you maybe not like maybe I didn't enjoy maybe, it like yeah, you, maybe not Annie. as brutally that's one thing I've always said is like when Annie is killing Levi's squad and all those people she has like this didn't she creepy, do that rope swing yeah or something she's like that? doing way too much and she has these creepy ass smiles it's like she really really enjoys it so <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation but anyways <laughs> How Armin was portraying that like, yeah, I'm not a good person. I have murdered civilians, children, like we're in this shit together. So like yeah. sit down and let's just be here together. And then freaking him hitting the riz on her like that with the, the hand grab. maximum riz with that. He, that was crazy. It's good I, to see them both happy though. Like I was really happy to see them get like at least like kind of a peaceful moment together where they could they were like blushing and it's like okay finally you're not experiencing like severe trauma you're just like admitting you kind of have feelings for each other yeah and if i gotta be honest it it kind of came out of no. right field a little bit right like yeah arvin and annie like i know he went down and talked, talked to, her, to her but then i got to thinking and what if the reason armin is like all about annie is because who did he eat Oh my god. And if you have memories of the people you eat, I wonder if wouldn't that's he why. be influenced by Bertolt. Bertolt's memories of like looking at Annie with love all the time and yeah. admiration? So like what if that is like a Cause huge Cuz it does yeah, cuz it wouldn't make sense with what Annie kind of put them through <laughs> when she was killing all their friends. Cuz if he has Bertolt's memories yeah. of Annie, like of course, then of course if Bertolt likes her, her, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's interesting. That actually would make a that would make a lot more sense because to me it really came out of nowhere. That like <laughs> it was so cute, but I was like, where did this come from? Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't mm. even I wouldn't have even realize that. Yeah, and actually, kind of going off what we were just talking about a little bit, I can't believe how quickly Mikasa picked up. That was so on funny. The Annie Armin thing. She was like, since when? And I was like, damn. Her how face did you? when she was like. She just oh, gave her one, one look towards Armin. I was like, okay, I can't believe you sniffed that out. Yeah. But then at the end of that scene, when Annie... Oh, the scarf. Yeah, Annie asked her if she had the scarf, and she said, oh, I have it. And yeah. that was almost worse than if she didn't have it, because that yeah. means she's choosing not to wear it, right? Yeah, which is so heartbreaking. I... She's, like, really battling with Aaron. Like, it's tough. She's, like, and... losing all of her hope in the person that she kind of well, really loves most like yeah and i terrible. think that was portrayed really well in the scene when aaron calls them to the paths and they all start running after him yeah and she's leading the charge yeah. just like bawling her eyes like she always is leading the yeah. charge when they're running to aaron like she has no hesitation just like to run um, towards him. remember in the first season when she almost ran out of gas because she was going too yeah. crazy because she thought aaron died yeah and was like just going at she it just, wow yeah yeah crazy yeah and then um reiner and annie had a moment too in this couple of scenes that was really cute when they hugged each other oh and yeah she was when like, he apologized I kill for, you but when he apologized for not turning back yeah <sighs> should turn back <laughs> he should have turned back things would be a whole lot different crazy. right now reiner poor reiner i can't even i know reiner's my favorite character hands down. yeah i I've... just can't it's unbelievable. I love Reiner too. He just deserved so much better. And I 
when I first watched um, the first and second season, I didn't pick up on the fact that he was. Um, didn't you say he was like <laughs> bipolar? Going in and out or, of or like. No, he had like split personalities yeah. almost. When you watch the scene with when they eat Marco, yeah. and he's like crying, he's like, "Why is Marco getting eaten?" And then Bertolt's like, "Oh shit." Yeah. He's going crazy. That's when you told me that I had like the most just like sympathy for him. I can't. That was so. So listen, that's almost like Aaron. He had to do something to cope with what was going yeah. on. He had to revert to like a whole nother person basically in order to cope with. Yeah. Because he truly loved who he was with, right? Yeah. As clearly because he's still with them today and they're together. You know what I mean? Yeah. But brutal because he couldn't like. How can I kill these people? but also love these people like this isn't making sense just like yeah. aaron crying to ramsey kind of it's like kind of a call for help in a way 100 percent. which is really yeah. sad that no one could help in time wow yeah. well that's depressing <laughs> yeah okay well, i just see that one panel with ryan actually i'm not gonna go there Never what mind. no what next one too depressing well anyways we love reiner here <laughs> yeah. and any reiner's um slander in the comments booted booted gone <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Flock's death. <laughs> Woo, baby! Flock's death. I know there is a lot of people out there that love Flock for some reason, and I do think he's a very well written, well, character very well written character. Because he st he stays true to his beliefs and who he is, so he's a very well written character. But since he the second pisses me off, since the second he popped up from surviving the Beast Titan throws, yeah, <laughs> he has been on a war path, and he hasn't strayed left or right no. i'll give him that 100 percent. yeah but good riddance good riddance goodbye literally, literally. when he came out there and tried to shoot i shit, couldn't I like, believe that ass, when please. it was just on your component and then you can see him walking behind i was like oh my god oh my god no. oh my god no thank god he was so effed up though he couldn't shoot straight he was like drunk yeah. and just <laughs> missing all over the place yeah oh my god that was crazy but are you telling me he clung to this to the ship, ship? That, I mean, just <laughs> taking water the whole time. I mean, that's no one thing about Flock that I respect. He is dedicated. and Yeah, think about that. He will do And that was after he getting wants. blasted by Gabby. Yeah. I mean, In fighting yeah. through the Cart Titan and Hanji and everybody. He's he's pretty badass, I'm not going to lie. Like Way more badass than when he was crying like a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's definitely like a very well-written character, and I think that he stays true to himself which is good but he's just so frustrating mm. because it's like this is not good you want genocide this is, this you want Aaron good. to kill her this is not good <laughs> but I get yeah. it though he's a well written character but Jesus Christ oh. Oh, we just looked at the notes and oh my god yeah we looked at the notes of what was next that happened in um the Hanji scene which is the most saddest thing but also well, the, beautiful to start the scene Levi saying dedicate your heart <sighs> that was just too much yeah I was not expecting I that thinking about it I know right we're now. both just like completely different now well and how right before that she was told Armin that he's the new commander oh yeah and Levi's that your underling now <laughs> make him go to so work cute. I love that and Armin deserved it too Armin's mm. like the most genius boy he deserves everything good he deserved to be revived he really did. Yeah, completely, 100% agree. Yep. But yeah, that um, whole thing with Levi and Hanji basically saying goodbye was... That was tough. Really sad. Because how many people has Levi lost now? Everybody. Levi Everybody. has lost every single person that he every truly, really cared about. Every single person. And then like for him to Sucks. just accept it like he did... Yeah. He just knew that, like, yeah, it was. It was I think time. that almost makes it sadder, like Levi's reactions to all these people dying. How he just like kind of sits in silence by himself. It's like there's so many emotions in there that this man will not let out or let anybody see, and it's just like yeah. it's heartbreaking. But yeah, he's lost everyone at this point now. Yeah. Just terrible. And as depressing as that was, her killing all those colossal titans that was badass. she got she exactly she got what, she, what deserved. she deserved as far as screen time and animation budget and everything that was unbelievable yeah that was so cool the to watch. song choice was mm -hmm. absolutely perfect yeah and you can just tell they spent forever on that animation of her just with the odm gear flying around like 
it was so smooth and just like satisfying to watch and that's exactly what she deserved and i loved when she like went up in the air and she was looking at him and she said something along the lines of like wow titans, titans really are, are always amazing like so cool i just that is the most hanji fitting way to go out yeah like, i love that yeah and then obviously when she hits the ground i was not ready for that to like have like an afterlife kind oh of thing in, in AOT for those. And then definitely what we didn't notice on the first time was there was a lot more people there than just Irwin. Sasha, the back Sasha of Sasha. Was there with, she was there with Keith yeah. too, which I thought was amazing since they were like the going at each other with the potato. Yeah. Wasn't Hitch in one. there? Hitch was, I think was there. Hitch was there. Marlo. And Marlo was there. Wait, is Hitch? Was she there? I thought so. Maybe. Maybe. Go back. There's we so gotta many. rewatch it for the fifth time. But then, um, Miche, right? Or whoever, however you say his name, he yeah. was there. Pixies was there. Yeah. There was even some horsies there. Yeah, that dude with his horse. He's That's like, I'm, not, I'm not leaving my horse. The horse is an AOT. They deserve some. They deserve some. Good lord, they deserve some. Kind something. of good thing in the afterlife, because Jesus Christ. But I really loved what Erwin said, how... He, even like his posture, just like leaning over and like holding Haji is like, yeah. you can tell us all about it. Yeah. Like that just brought yeah. tears in my eyes. That was I It broke beautiful. my heart when Hanji like kind of looked around. Oh, and realized. And she goes, oh, I see. She and goes, she I see. And I was like, yeah, she <laughs> looks at the boat and then kind of realizes. She goes, oh. Oh, that was, was brutal. Beautiful. Isayama did such a good job with giving her that ending though and, and the fact, making it so meaningful. Yeah, that's what I was going to go on is the fact that they're all there watching the boat. Yeah. Meaning that like all of their lives like led up to this moment yeah. for this boat to go off. Yeah. And like it's just beautiful. A thousand percent. It's crazy. I, I love yeah. it so much. Yeah. But then seeing, showing, flashing back to them on the boat and them all. Oh, crying. <sighs> oh, that made it was it like so Sasha much crying 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. That was just horrible to watch, but it was like, I mean, that was like the only way that she could have gone out. It was like just so perfect for her to i hope one of them talks about how badass that was later though did you guys see how many they're going to because she took out, how she took out like not? she took out like three or four with the spears because she would trip them up and they yeah, would they were trampling fall. on each other yeah and then Disgusting. she probably sliced like four or five of them yeah so. oh yeah so this is a crazy one the fact that Armin and they all realize that Aaron is purposefully giving them free will. Yeah. Like if he has full control of Titans and Eldians, like why he can is do he, anything he wants. Essentially, why is he allowing them? And like why isn't he stopping Titans yeah. from being turned? Or why is he allowing them to even turn into Titans? So like Reiner said, like does he want us to stop them? And it's almost like he's just trying to make his friends like the good guys that like save the world yeah. in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, I'm just really excited to see how that plays out. But it's crazy that they realize like, wait, he's given us free will. Like he yeah. wants us to to decide whether to stop him or not. Like, And I that's like how cool. right when they acknowledge that and they say like, I think he's giving us free will. They all show up in paths. That was and crazy. It's Aaron's and that's like, yeah, you guys figured it out. Yay. You guys, you figured it out. But guess what? I ain't got nothing to say to you. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> gonna have to watch child like me and Ymir just stand here and stare at you and literally yeah Ugh. and it was so cool though when they were running towards Aaron and then they like turned they were like and they in were the same already spot. back yeah he like zapped them classic back classic creepy shit Twilight <laughs> Zone just <laughs> classic no thanks. Creepy shit. it was so cool though but I thought just... it was cool to see both Aaron and Ymir standing yeah. there like yin and yang side they're by side they're completely different and they're 100% because think about it what did Ymir do she like did anything and everything for other people she gave up basically her life for other she had, people she has had never had an ounce of freedom which is heartbreaking yep whereas aaron all he wants is what she deserved basically yeah is like this freedom and so but he he's will taking it because she's not capable of hurting a fly it seems literally like. literally so and he, he has to do it for her whew, creepy. but I, I wonder if that's what she wants though like i mean i know she's letting him do all this but like i wonder what she really wants you know i, I feel like that almost this is just totally my take and this is might just be totally wrong but i feel like it's like because so let's look at the episode names of the first episode in the 80th right mm -hmm. to you at 2000 years from now and then from, from you 2000, 2000 years, years ago or whatever yeah. i think that 
Because Aaron, this founding titan power, it all comes from Ymir. I think this is like the part of Ymir that wanted to escape her life, right? It's the part of Ymir that like wanted to break out of this like slavery. Yeah. And the only way it just came back full circle 2000 years later. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. That makes a lot of sense. And actually, that's why yeah. I think they stand side by side is because like they, in a way, complete e each, other. each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot of shit going on there and a lot more to that I'm sure <laughs> we don't understand. Yeah. But. And if you guys also have any like things that we've missed or that mm -hmm. we just don't really have right, we would we love to like hear your guys' opinions in the comments. Yeah. I'd too. love to learn as much as we can. Yeah. So just be nice to each other because some people yeah. on Twitter are so mean. What the hell? If yeah. you don't have, if you have like a dis a slightly differing opinion, people will attack you on Twitter. It's crazy. So just be a little nice, jeez. Yep. Oh yeah, and so this kind of goes what we were saying about how everyone is always comes to terms with things right before death. Yeah, right at the end. And I really loved uh, the scene with Reiner's mom, how she had like all these flashbacks and basically realized the wrongdoings of what she did with bringing up Reiner, right? And it, all the things she'd done wrong, and if she would have just been a mom and loved him, and all the, all these other things that things might have been different. Yeah. Right. And then after. She comes to that realization and breaks down for Reiner to show up. I mean, yeah, I think that I was a, such a sweet mm -hmm. scene. And it's just something too where it's like there's so much going on in this story that I love that Isayama took the time to like add that part of the story in there when it's like there's enough going on already. But he added that little moment because it with just Reiner's ties in mom. so perfectly, yeah. too. Because the whole to all the themes, it's just perfect, which yeah. is why it's like the best written story of all time, honestly. But yeah, that whole thing with his mom was just really, really sweet. Mm. And I think it came very full circle that she was, he showed up right then to come like kind of save them all. Yeah. Which also it's funny that these people too are getting saved by like people that they hated, you know? Like, oh yeah, like, like that one guy said, he goes, wait, is that par parody forces coming, to save, coming us? to save us? Like what? Yeah. And it's just like fuck. that that kind of stuff is what I think could break the generational exactly. cycle that they just have going on and on. It's like if there was more of that, like you guys probably wouldn't you, be here. Literally, because <laughs> you know what stopped hate between the two? Like look at Annie and the whole crew. When Annie yeah. leaves on the ship. And they wave to her. They're waving to her and saying goodbye. And like that besides right there. Levi. Besides Levi. <laughs> Levi, Levi was giving eye. a hard side eye. And I don't blame him because of Petra. <laughs> yeah. But like that is how you break the generational curses yeah. right and it's they did it like that and that's literally the little things like that yeah I love it. so that scene was super important i think too but that's about when they show up the alliance shows up and oh, has the yeah. most like badass jumping out of the ship and onto aaron scene and like the music With and the when, drums. yeah and when armin and mikas so are flying cool. down and it's like their hair going back it that was the coolest thing ever. It was like so exciting to watch. Yeah, I my favorite part about that was when Reiner shoots forward a couple times with the ODM oh, gas. Oh yeah, when he like and, and then, then he transforms. That in one of the coolest transformations of the show to date. He has the best transformations. Hundred percent. My favorite Reiner transformation of all time is. Can you guess? No. My favorite Reiner transformation of all time is when he's hiding in the wall. Oh. And he pops out yeah. and Levi gets him in the neck or in the chest and neck. And then he hits the ground and like, is he dead? And then his eyes go like crazy and he hits his head. And oh my God, yeah. it's the scariest, most intimidating. Like you can't kill this guy. It's Holy so hell. It's, yeah, it's so good. But yeah, I loved his transformation in this episode. And then he took out the what I thought originally was a beast titan, but then realized that that's definitely just, just Aaron doing the Warhammer Titan. So god knows where zeke is he's yeah, probably because, absorbed somewhere in this yeah, giant thing this somewhere giant skeleton. i don't even know but it's scary to think that he can just summon the beast titan throwing rocks yeah. like like the warhammer could summon a hammer or a crossbow like that is that's some like powerful yeah you can't really go against that literally uh, th yeah they're screwed i yeah. don't even know so if he can do the beast titan i would assume he can probably make other things a ton of other stuff like that too I, but the, you can't like beat the beast titan with this throwing rocks like that's true <laughs> what else that's could like, what else would you even need yeah so i i couldn't tell when we first saw zeke or 
more hammer Zeke. But then I saw like a, it looked like a string kind of hanging. Oh yeah, no, the yeah, the weird things on his head and, and on then his I was feet. Like, that doesn't and, look then, real. and then I saw someone online was like, "Yo, Mapper forgot to color Zeke." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what they did. Because Mappa would do that. <laughs> no, he's just all white. It definitely wore hammer. I, that shit had me cracking up. Yeah. That whole ending was so good, but it was really sad then when the credits started rolling. Oh my god. I honestly... Like they finally you know, got there. I knew, that, I knew we were a lengthy amount into that, but yeah. I was not expecting that to be the end. End right was, there, right And then it like went him. black and it was like silent for a couple seconds. You're yeah. like, uh, is it over? Is it going to do like another one of those chapter things? Is it over? Yeah. And then the Sim starts playing and you're like, no, but I like the song. That song no. was a banger. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's the rumbling level sim from no and from also me, what makes it tough is that um it's the really hard it's really hard to get hype when a it's not an opening so it's not like at the beginning yeah. of every episode for like three months straight yeah and then b yeah there's no like animation to go with it i mean there was but like it's not like opening animation yeah like nothing crazy you know 100 percent. but the song 100 percent a banger i've been oh, listening so to good. it on itunes yeah all the time on repeat so all right, guys, if we missed anything, please let us know down in the comments. We love uh, talking, going back and forth with yeah. you guys. And we are so excited for fall. I mean, we are counting down the days. Armin's probably going to turn. He's still got the Colossal, hasn't even used that. The Cart Titans got all this dynamite on them. Cart I mean, Titans. I think it's going to be crazy. <laughs> also, for the month of March, we're going to be reacting to Demon Slayer, One Punch Man, and The Boys. Um, we'll have every episode up on Patreon. And if you are on our Patreon, you'll be about a month ahead of our YouTube schedule. Mm. Um, but we're very excited to watch those. We're getting ready. We're watching the um, Entertainment District arc of Demon Slayer mm -hmm. to get ready for Season 3, which we're both really, really excited about. About. Yep. Is there a release date yet? Nope. I mean, there's. It's in theaters right now. Like the. Yeah. I think it's like the first two episodes or three okay. episodes, and it's like be top soon. on top of the recap. But anyways, yeah, we're, I'm really excited to be reacting to all of those. Also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready. <laughs> go. No, I do go. If okay, I'm talking. Geez. Ready? Because <laughs> I can't go. I'm gonna split. Okay. Up. <laughs> you can't. You don't make the farting the noise. I know. <laughs> I'm like a five-year-old. Don't okay, make the farting noise. Also, if you like the merch that we've been wearing, or in. <laughs> 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 also, if you guys like what we're wearing, I do have a small business, and I'll link that right up here. Um, you guys can go check it out. I have Attack on Titan, Berserk. Demon Slayer, Spy Family, name it. everything, JoJo's. Everything. I've got so many different things on there, and I also have like Star Wars and Marvel stuff too. So go check that out if you guys want to, and we'll see you guys on Friday for Demon Slayer. Friday. Thanks, guys. <laughs>